Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to a special edition of Real Talks. I'm your host, David Steele, and we have a special guest joining us today. He currently hails from Boston, Massachusetts, so we actually have that in common. His show, Fill With The Movies, can be found everywhere where you get your favorite podcasts. He's released a total of 18 episodes. His latest endeavor was to do a deep dive into the Halloween franchise, leading all the way up to the October release of Halloween Ends. His latest episode, Halloween 5, was released only just a few days ago. New, release, new episodes are released each and every Friday. I'm happy and ecstatic to have Mr. Phil Walsh on Real Talks. How are you, hey, Phil? I'm doing all right. Hey, thank you very much for having me. This is great. And you're welcome. Doing. And where can they find you on social media? So I have two. Uh, uh, my my personal one, the one that I'm most active on, is Phil Cast Movies. That's where you're going to get sort of my uh, moment-to-moment uh, reactions and uh, reviews and whatnot. But the handle for my show is Phil at the Movies. Uh, that's you know more just sort of the, the business end of it, if uh, if you will. But uh, definitely, if you uh, if you want to tweet at me, Phil at uh, Phil Cast Movies is probably the best place to find me. Fantastic. So, um, where do, so for the, of course, because this is audio, people can't see him, but his background is pretty, uh, amazing. He's got everything from <laughs> Star Wars stuff, but I see a lot of Batman stuff. There, there so is a lot. tell us about your uh, obsession with Batman. <laughs> well, I do. I don't think we have enough time to get into uh, Maybe that, not an obsession, we'll, but we'll your try. fondness. You know, um, and, uh, Probably starts back when I was, I don't know, maybe four or five. I saw the Adam West movie uh, on TV, or no, it was actually was a was a home video rental. And you know, at the time, like you have no idea that it's a sort of over the top, zany, you know, campy at points um, uh, spoof on the genre. But I, I just absolutely loved it. I ate it up, and that sort of just open the floodgates you know from there it was on to keaton and and the schumacher films and you know the animated series and every i mean anything batman comic movie i i just like candy you know and, and nice. still to this day i i you know i will uh get into a to many a conversation when it comes to you know batman versus whoever and i will always side with batman because he is the greatest superhero because he's not a superhero no, and, and that's why they call him the world's greatest detective. That's right. So tell that's me, right. what, what did you think about the new Batman? In one word, fantastic. Absolutely loved it. Absolutely loved it. You know, you have the Nolan trilogy, which sort of, you know, hovers over everything Batman today because it was such a transformative and, and monumental um kind of redefining of the genre and really of, of the character. But, uh, you know, as a Batman fan, I'm going to go see anything Batman. And when the word first got out that this was going to happen, and then, of course, that Matt Reeves was going to do it, I was like, all right, this is, this is going to be different. This is going to be something not, not like we've seen before. And so, you know, you kind of build up expectations in your mind. But, I, you know, there were very few where I can say, like, you have like a, a transformative theater going experience. And when I watched the Batman, it, it was just like that for me. I mean, it was, it was cinema come alive, I guess is the way to put it. Uh, loved it. Thought it was, was a perfect reinvention, reinterpretation of the character for a new generation. And I mean, I'm all in, I, I can't wait to see what's coming with the spinoff shows and uh, uh, the inevitable sequel. I think it's going to be great. Yeah, and this, assuming HBO Max can get their, their act together. Well, there's a lot <laughs> yeah, going on with DC. There's a Warner. lot going on there. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I, I, you know, of course I saw it, and that was one of my first episodes. And if you want to go back and listen to the Batman spoiler cast, you know, feel free to. But, you know, I, I loved it. I, you know, a lot of people said, oh, well, it dropped off in the third act. And I don't really think so. It really... You needed – this was a different interpretation and iteration of Batman. We had never seen a year two Batman. We had seen a Michael Keaton one and a Christian Bale that was hardened and, you know, all the George Glenn and all of that. But we had never seen somebody who was actually still trying to figure themselves out. 
And I was so happy that Matt Reeves went that direction and the detective story. And mm -hmm. that's what really grasped me. It was like, okay, this is different. And then of course, Sandy Serkis was amazing. So oh, he's, he's always fantastic. Um, I, even though they are in totally different worlds and, and, and separate, at least for the moment, I really put this alongside of the movie Joker in the sense of like, I, I can't believe a movie like this exists because, you know, this is not Marvel and not that DC or, or even, you know, previous Batman movies have tried to, to replicate Marvel, but the Batman is a very different animal. It's, it's not your straightforward, here's your big action set piece and here's, you know, your, your witty jokes. I mean, it is a serious crime driven, in many ways, psychological thriller that really gets under the skin of the character. And I, I mean, to this day, it's like, again, putting it alongside Joker. I, I, I'm just amazed and glad that a movie like this exists because it really does serve as a nice kind of counterbalance to the, to the Marvel stuff. And again, I'm not trying to shit on Marvel, but it's just, no, like, no, 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 know. no, no, no. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it is what it is. You have to treat each film independently of itself. And I think that, you know, one of the, I mean, so I, I personally said I thought it deserved five Academy Award nominations. I think it's best picture. Right. In, in, and that's a whole other argument for another time with the right. Dark Knight and how they went yeah. from five to, okay, we're not, no, we're not discussing that. However, I do deserve, I think it deserves the best picture nomination. Oh, Best I agree with original you. score. Okay. The score is amazing. Unbelievable. Oh. Paul Dano, absolutely. If he doesn't get nominated for Best Supporting Actor, there's something wrong. No. There is something critically, critically wrong with the Academy. And, and they, yeah, with, there have been subs before. But this right now, to date, is one of the five best performances of the year. Oh, without Hands question. And I, and I would throw no. in Colin Farrell as well. I would throw him Possibly. in there as well. And, and, and the one drawback there is... You don't want two guys because they're going at the same thing. Yeah. Exactly. Um, Matt Reeves is absolutely going to get a Best Director Oscar nomination, as he should, oh. I think. And then, you know. Long you overdue. Can best, best, you know, costume. I mean, yeah. you know, every costume is different. But even, or hair and makeup, one of the, you know, two. But in all honesty, you if you had no idea and you walked in this movie completely blind, you wouldn't have not known that was Colin Farrell. Oh, There's I no know. way. Oh, I know. Oh, so no. I, I'm ecstatic and curious to see what the Academy does. I, you know, I don't want to say they're going to, they're going to, you know, snub it because there is that sort of, oh, you know, nose in the ear to comic book movies. I, I mean, if it gets a best picture nod, which I mean, it, it deserves in my view, um, I, I will be, pleasantly surprised i i do think it, it will and and frankly should get a lot of the you know other technical aspects like you figure your cinematography like you said the score um costuming makeup like i mean these are th this was not a, a half-assed movie you know what i mean like this, this was a real serious effort and and, and it and it shows you know what i mean like you know sometimes like you can kind of you know say oh they may have you know cut corners here or, or whatnot and you figure against the backdrop of a pandemic i mean this is really this is really something special yeah so okay we we, we love the batman so when you're not watching the batman or you're not watching, give me a couple films that you just like to put down on a sunday afternoon and just go i relaxing you know a lot of it depends on on you know the mood or, or what i'm uh you know what I'm doing, you know, cause like some movies will just be kind of, you know, background noise. And like, um, one that I actually had on recently, I was doing some work and I had on Notting Hill. That was just a little, you know, it's, I've seen it a number of different times, but like, you know, you can walk into it at any point and like, okay, this, this, is, this is a good, this is a good flick. Um, go to movies. I mean, you know, it, it sort of depends on on the mood. I mean, Fletch is something that I will always I will always pop in and like. Again, that's another one. If I walk into it, or or you know, Uncle Buck, always have to put those on. Those are those are classics. Um, 
you know, one that I actually just watched recently, uh, kind of, and it was, you know, I saw it flashed up on Twitter that it was its uh, anniversary, but it was a uh, Halloween H two O, and uh, you know, just you know, again, I've seen it, you know, more times than I can count, but you know, it, it's one of those things, you know, it's a comfort, it's a comfort movie, you know, horror I tend to find is like a comfort uh in, in many ways like i you know just kind of you know you're doing nothing or you're trying to unwind it's it's always good to kind of throw it on or something so that's a perfect segue so tell us about your so you you're now starting a deep dive into halloween yeah. tell us about it like uh, what made you want to actually go back and watch i mean the carpenter ones are, are classic but what made you want to actually go back and do that well, I mean, you can't see it, uh, or your audience can't see it, but I have a photo over my shoulder of Donald Pleasance uh, as Dr. Loomis from the first movie. So that kind of, you know, establishes my, my Halloween credentials, if you will, that this is not just, oh, I'll just you know, do Halloween and build up. Um, I'm a huge fan of this of this franchise. I, you know, I hold the original one to sort of off in its own little space. It's, you know, one of the greatest horror movies ever made. I put it in my top 10. Like it's just, it's, it's fantastic. But yeah, you know, this is the, what now the third, going to be the 13th installment in October with, with Halloween ends. And I thought given that, you know, a, I'm a big fan and, and B, this is going to be the, the final movie. I mean, we, we all know Michael Myers will be back because at the end of the day, money is what drives these movies. But I mean, for this particular storyline, which, you know, goes back to the original, this is it. So I felt it was only appropriate to do a, a deep dive and, and really look at all of these movies because, you know, you look at them as a fan, which, which I am, and even some of the more, you know, less than stellar entries in the series, you know, shall we say, and I'm looking at you, you know, Halloween six, for example, or Halloween eight, um, you know, it's fun to kind of go back and look at them with a more critical lens, if that makes any sense, because, you know, there there's a reason why these movies have survived and have, you know, again, it's like Michael Myers, they keep coming back. And, you know, I, I maybe that speaks to you know, like the broader audience, like we'd like to be scared. I don't know. But uh, th there's something fascinating, whereas like Jason or Freddy almost looks, I don't know, silly by comparison but michael myers always seems to you know never lose that scare factor that x factor if you will and you know that that that's a that's a driving force for me so did you enjoy so you, you had seen the uh iteration of the, the new halloween oh yeah in, in the, so how did you feel about that i mean i know that you know it's it's interesting because there is a lot of division and I, I try not to get into the whole, like, you know, people picking sides. Like, I mean, to me, I, I, I enjoy movies. Like I go into these, you know, for my own benefit, not what the group thinks or what have you. Um, intrigued when they announced this sort of retcon reboot, I guess we'd call it a requel now. Uh, that's yeah. the appropriate term uh, back in, I don't know, was it 2016, 2017, and I was intrigued by the idea that they were going to ignore every sequel and just take it from the first film. And again, I know that's, that is a source of division or maybe that's probably too strong of a word, but controversy, if you will, for some, because of the whole sibling storyline that's uh, yeah. now negated. I, for one, what they've done, I, I, Again, I, I'm, I'm probably in the minority. I really liked Halloween Kills. I thought it was a fun kind of throwback to the 80s slasher uh, movie. But again, kind of continuing what they had established with the first one. And, and, and I like that they're saying, no, we're going to ignore the sequels and we're just going to work from John Carpenter's movie. Because, you know, again, don't take my word for it. John Carpenter himself has said, never should have made them brother and sister. You know, Laurie and Michael, it... it lessens the scare you know it, it, it's more intriguing when you just have a random boogeyman <laughs> running around versus like okay you know there's the crazy brother in the corner you know what i mean it's just i i think it was a smart decision and i'm really excited and curious how they're going to end it if you will 
Well, yeah, and that was going to be my next question. Are you looking forward to the new release in October? I, I am. Uh, I, th- this is one of my uh, my uh, most anticipated movies of the year. You know, kind of started with the Batman, and it will most likely, you know, there's a few others, you know, later on, but the uh, Halloween ends is right at the top uh, of the list. So I'm I'm curious how they're going to go. I I think because Jamie Lee Curtis is involved and she's producing it now that there will be some kind of finale. Uh, again, I, you know, Michael Myers will be back in some form, form or another down the road, but uh, I, I'm curious how they're going to end. It's a, somebody is going to bite it, whether it's her or, or uh, uh, Michael uh, remains to be seen. The, the jury is still out for me. I, I, I go back and forth. So, Let's talk about, so I was saying, I, I was listening to one of your episodes. Um, it was the one, so the summer, I won't say blockbusters, but yeah, they were blockbusters. This is the first time that, I called this the summer of the comeback. This is the first time we've had four or five movies in a theater at once that's made over $100 million. You start out the, with Doctor Strange. You know, Multiverse of Madness. You got a Minions. You got a the Money Machine that is Top Gun Maverick that just crossed. That is only five million dollars back as of today, as of this recording. Five million dollars back of Infinity War. It's insane. It is number thirteen all time I in all the movies ever made. Who would have thought after thirty years, right? Seriously. Um, you have Thor: uh, Love and Thunder, and you know you you got one other, and it's like. This movie, that movie in itself, but all those movies combined, made the theaters who they are, and they are back. So tell us, which of the three, because so you reviewed Thor's Love and Thunder, yep. The Black Phone, yep. and Elvis. Right. Which one of those did you like the most? Oh, boy. that You know, all them for very different reasons that's a cop-out answer so i'm not going to i'm not going to give you that i will say of the three of them the one that i um, was the black phone and, and that's partially just my love of horror but it was a really well done movie and it never felt over the top it never felt cheesy and it never I, felt contrived Exactly. No, it was it was organic from beginning to end. And I appreciate horror where it's not like there's much room for reinvention today. Like I mean, pretty much everything has been covered more or less. But I liked how they were able to take both sort of a, a psychological, almost supernatural story and then put it with like, you know, your classic you know, boogeyman movie, if you will. I mean, I think the Black Phone is a is a new age classic. I think you're going to be seeing more and more people in the grabber mask this Halloween and, and for Halloween's to come. I think it's really changed the game in many ways, and it was just like it was enjoyable, and there were there were re- legitimate moments of pure dread and terror that I felt while watching the movie multiple times. And like again, you know. I, I usually don't get scared by these uh, these kind of things. Like I just you know I enjoy them, but there were moments I was like, you know, holy shit! <laughs> like this is this is intense stuff, and I attribute that all to to Ethan Hawke. But um, you know, again, that's not I, you know I don't want to like say like oh Elvis was was you know I didn't enjoy it because I I did, but um, I don't know just the the, the black phone. It just uh, you know when it rang, I picked up. I guess that's the way to say it. It was really it was something special. Yeah, yeah. Um, I kind of put you on the spot there, but yeah, it was one of those things where, like, so I I love the black phone. I think this is this, believe it or not, this was the first Blumhouse movie I'd seen. So the budget was only sixteen, eighteen million dollars, and this had so many vibes of a couple of different movies for me. One was Saw, just because of the horror aspect, but the majority of it was in one room, and that was. You know, anybody who's seen Saw, this is almost a redefining type of movie in that respect. Uh, The other one I thought of off the top of my head was uh, Phone Booth. Speaking of Colin Farrell, where he's only in one place, but 
it was masterful. And I thought the kids, I mean, you described it well in your podcast. The kids did a fantastic job because they carried this movie, they especially did. the young man. No, so, um, no, I mean, you know, again, kid act, you know, kid actors you know, can sometimes either make or break a movie. And this was, this felt real. And I mean, both these kids have great jokes ahead of them. I mean, this was this yeah. utterly, utterly fantastic. I loved Elvis too. I mean, I really, really enjoy it. I mean, if, if we're talking Oscar nominations, if Austin De Butler does not get any Oscar nomination for Best Actor, there's something. There is something. Seriously, wrong. no, the system is broken if that's the case, because that is, you know, a lot of times we talk about a career defining performance. That is a career making performance. And we will be seeing and hearing from Austin Butler, I think, for many, many years to come. He is a le legitimate movie star, and, and that movie showed it uh, in, in in spades. It was just, you know, again, it, it, it's so different. Like, it's a different, obviously, vibe from, from the black phone. But I, I have to say, I, I was very skeptical going into that movie because, you know, number one, it's, you know, it's a biopic, and so it's always a you know, a roll of the dice, how it's going to turn out. But, um, you know, then you hear all this hype and like, okay, there's no way it can live up to the expectations. Well, I mean, no, expectations exceeded. Like, it was just, it was it was amazing. That that, that was another sort of transformative theater uh, experience. Tom Hanks was good. I mean, he wasn't Forrest Gump good or Apollo oh. 13 or good, but he was still good. But Austin Butler stole the show. Literally yeah. stole it's, the show. No, it, 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 it Austin, but it's it, it's Austin Butler's movie, uh, beginning yeah. to end. I mean, it's again it was you know watched it you know a week or two ago, and, and just like talk about embodying somebody, you know, like it just it, yeah. you, you're watching Elvis, you know what I mean? Like, well, yeah, and I think it's always more difficult. So when you, biopics are one of those things where, especially if the person's still alive. You want to do the very best, like a rocket man, which you were talking about the podcast. Right. It's so difficult because Elton John's still alive. Mm -hmm. Even though he had input, even though you know his story, you want to live up to his expectations. Of, yeah. Whereas somebody like Elvis, which I would even think is even more of an expectation because of how things happened and mm -hmm. passing away in 1970. It's like, okay, we really have to come out and make this top notch. And so... Yeah, so Thor: Love and Thunder. Let's talk about that. I, it was. I saw it. It was good. It wasn't great. I thought it was. You know, I thought there were some holes. But what do you think, Phil? Look, you know, it's a it's a easy answer to say it's Marvel. Like you know, it's 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 a Marvel movie. It's it's number you know, what is it? Twenty we're in twenty seven or twenty eight now? I've I've yeah. lost count. Um, you know, I. Enjoyed Doctor Strange, you know, probably not as much as some, though I, I, I know there's a lot of division with, with that particular movie. I, I think Thor Love and Thunder would like better. And that's not to say that, you know, it's a, a better movie overall. I like Thor because it never takes itself too seriously. And it kind of is a throwback to the you know, this is kind of before comic book movies went legit, if that makes any sense. And again, that's not to say it's just like cheesy over the top movie. I, it was it, there's no like hidden trap door with it. Like it, it, what you're seeing is what you're getting with it. And, and, and you know, and sometimes that's kind of refreshing. Like, are, are there problems with it? Sure. But I mean, from an entertainment value, from you know, kind of the old, you know, summer blockbuster thing. Like, I, I, I thought it, you know, it checks all the boxes. But yeah, is there Marvel fatigue? I mean, sure. But in the same time, like, uh, Wakanda Forever is going to come out in, in a few more months, and that's probably going to make just, you know, oodles and oodles of money, like, and, and be a critical yeah. darling. So, like, I think a lot of it, it really depends on the movie itself. Um, you know, Thor gets criticized because of, you know, maybe there's too much humor, which I mean, you know, I, I didn't think it was that over the top. Like, 
compared to Ragnarok, I, I like this better than, than Ragnarok, I have to say. Um, and again, I might be in the minority with that opinion, but you know, again, it, it, what you see is what you get. Like, you know, it's, it's, it, it felt like a nice self-contained story. You didn't have to worry about, well, it's going to connect to this movie three months from now, or this movie two years. Like what you see is what you get. And I think that's the biggest thing that, um, everybody was not worried about, but a lot of these movies, and these, especially the Thor movies and, and everything else, they all feel like individual episodes now. Yeah. And so whether it was, you know, Spider-Man No Way Home back then or Black Widow or the Thor movie or Eternals, and they're going totally polar opposite directions. And that's appreciative. Mm-hmm. But, and I think this is why the Infinity, you know, Saka works so well is because after the first, after the fourth movie, Okay, in, in the Avengers, we saw who the big bad was. Yeah. We saw some sort of what we're leading up to. Yeah. Fifteen years later, when you get an Infinity War and you leave it on that point break of, right. you know, plot point of point of no return, mm-hmm. and then you have the other one come back, and that's why Endgame just made exploding money. Yeah. So we're right now in Phase Four. You don't have that. Right. You have to be the – you have to watch every single thing, yep. almost. I mean, pretty much. I mean, if you haven't watched Loki, you're not going to know what's going on in this and so on and so forth. But for the most part, you can walk into a movie and go, okay, so we've kind of figured out who the big bad is now and everything else. And that's a whole other thing for another time. But I really – it's going to be curious and interesting to see where they go from this because now Marvel's changed. And hopefully, fingers crossed – Hopefully DC can get their act together and, you know, and and that's another big thing too. Let let me talk to you. We we talked about it for a minute earlier. Joker two. Yeah. There's a lot of divisive about this because everybody says, no, you don't want to make a second Joker. It's good the way it was. Blah, 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 blah. It's a billion dollar movie. Tom Phillips and company got 11 Oscar nominations for this. Yep. Joaquin Phoenix ends up winning a best uh, second, by the way, his second best Oscar, the best actor Oscar. Do you think it needed a sequel to Phil? You know, I was of the mindset that that it was a perfect standalone movie because it left you wanting more and you can kind of build in your own mind where the story threads were, would go. Now, because it made so much money and because it was a, a sort of a surprise mega hit, it, it made sense that there would inevitably be a sequel. Now, when you're presented with a sequel, you have to make a choice. Are you going to continue the storyline or are you going to do something different? And that was something I could not really wrap my head around because I said, OK, you almost have to commit and say we're going to go in this direction. Uh, or, or, or not and now with the details that have come out you have lady gaga you have the prospect of it having some musical elements that to me says number one they're going for broke like they, they, they're going to throw everything at the wall now and okay with that because that's what i think made the first one work so well is that it was this sort of original you know let's just throw it at the wall and see what sticks kind of a movie and so i think for a sequel you almost have to follow that blueprint to a to a degree the other point i would just say phoenix doesn't do sequels you know that that he's never done a sequel if he is signing on to do this and yes granny's getting paid a lot of money but you know putting that all aside you know he, he is you know, for lack of a better word, an artist. If he is committing to do this movie, that to me just elevates what we're about to see. And I think, I mean, I don't even think we can wrap our head around right now what kind of a movie this is going to be, other than to say it is going to be unlike anything we've ever seen. You know, you take Joker and just kick it up to an 11. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. And it's just one of those things where it's like, you know, I, I you know, I, I I don't know. I mean, I really, I love the first one. 
I love the first one. I thought it was great where it was, as you said, a standalone film. But does it really... Now, the other question is, and I don't think we're ever going to get this answer, at least not for quite a few years. Do you think DC would ever connect the two? I Um, mean... Well... You got the Batman 2 in development. Well, you know, they want to green light this. We know that. But, like, could they ever connect the two and make it work? The way DC is right now and, and Warner Brothers, you know, anything is possible. You know, I mean, you know, that girl just got, you know, just got canceled. So, like, anything is probably on the table. Right now, I would probably say just from the standpoint that vis-a-vis the Batman, they've already opened the door with their Joker. Now, kind of back to what I said earlier, Joker and the Batman have a very similar aesthetic, but also a, a vibe. And that is that they really are this like grounded comic book not even comic book but really just a thriller a psychological thriller and so i mean you would have to be uh you know putting your head in the sand to to not see the a kinship between the two movies uh just again from the aesthetic but also the tone and the in the tenor i mean if they put me in charge of you know dc tomorrow you know i had a magic wand I would, without a doubt, Joker with the Batman. Now, that's not to say that, you know, Joaquin is like the Joker that Robert Pattinson ultimately faces, but I would find a way to make these movies connected because, I, like I said, from a, a universe place, it, 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 you know, it fits like a glove. It, it's it's yeah. It's right there. Now, whether or not it happens, I mean, it probably won't, but it, it is something interesting to think about. Um, now there have been a lot of talks, a lot of talks of a Superman movie. I mean, we had Man of Steel way back when they said, you know, the rumors were that, you know, Henry Cavill was going to show up at his Comic-Con. Yeah. That never happened. You know, whatever. How, so let's say you do get a magic one. You, you're in charge of DC. You want a Superman movie. How, A, who would you cast if you could? Mm. And B, I know, I know, I'm getting into tough ter- territory. Or B, would you ever try to ask Henry to come back, or would you be like, well, let's go a different direction? Because it's been so many years. What would you do? I think right now, if it, again, if I had you know the magic wand, I would do an utter reboot which is what i think they're ultimately going to do anyway that seems to be where the the direction is going i mean i think you're going to have your joker you're going to have your you know matt reeves batman universe off in its own place but in terms of like the you know dc extended universe i think we're going to automatically get a hard reboot and 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 be starting from scratch and that's and that's honestly fine. I think everything is spun out so much right now. And again, you have to look at it from a general audience perspective. There's the fan side, but there is the general audience side, and that's what's going to be about the you know returning seats and all that, and and yeah. you know people going back to see it multiple times. I think you say, all right, we start from we start from page one. So from that standpoint. Unfortunately, you probably say, you know, say goodbye to, to Henry. I know that, you know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, devotion to his interpretation of the character. I enjoyed Man of Steel. I thought it was a, I, it was the first Superman movie that I actually really enjoyed, to put it bluntly. Like, I, which is, it was very, it was different, but it was also kind of in that Superman tradition. But I, I think right now, too much time has passed. You have to start from scratch. And, you know, again, it's, it, it's kind of, Amazing that Batman has had now, you know, three or four different reinventions and all these different actors were on like, you know, seven or eight actors overall. And we, you know, they can't get a Superman. We can't get a Superman movie to save our lives. Yeah. Let me ask you this. And this is, so we were talking about 
DC and all these films and all these movies. Now, there's an elephant in the room here. And nobody wants to talk about it, or if they do, they just want to put it aside. And that's The Flash. This movie has, you were just making mention of the Batgirl that got canceled, and that was streaming. They canceled $90 million right off the bat. Okay, fine. Streaming. A, a movie studio, I mean, look, Marvel spent $250 million on Infinity War, but it made its money back times over. Yep. This movie was supposed to be the, quote, hard reset for the DC Universe. Now, the DC Universe, they said, we've got a 10-year plan or whatever else. Now, it's just reported today that they've taken this off the slate. The question oh. now becomes, yeah. So the question now becomes, if they're going to take it off the slate, and by the way, this has Michael Keaton from all reports and there's cameos and everything else. At what point, what do you do with the, if you're in charge of DC, and I know this is a tough question because no. <laughs> I've been cases and talked about this and everything else. What do you do with the Flash? You just came in. You've got a two hundred. You've got a star that's just on the rampage at this point, and you can't do anything about it. But you want to get your money, some money back. Do you try and release it internationally and not domestically? Because you know there's gonna, this would be worse than a Snyder cut. What do you do with the Flash, Phil? You know, at this point, I think I've said this before. The silence from from Warner Brothers is is deafening at this point because so much has gone on. Uh, again, I don't know if this is all they are running around and they don't know what exactly to do with it. But the longer that they go without putting out some kind of an official statement, I think speaks volumes. To me, at this point. Because there is so much at you know, really can't even say at stake with it. Because there's probably going to be some kind of a reboot, reset after it. I think, given that counts, the the studio is happy more or less with 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 the the current version of the Flash. You know, I think you you put it out there. Very limited press um, with, with with Ezra, and you really highlight it as Michael Keaton's swan song as as Batman. I I think that to me Keaton really has to be the face of it, and that's what I would do with it, uh, and really sell it as this is his Batman three. You know, this is an alternate universe, an alternate you know dimension, what have you. We're, we're on the multiverse train, after all, I'm just going to use the you word. Know, yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you make it for Keaton because I think again, this goes back to the general audience point. General audiences, the general audience is going to want to see Michael Keaton come back, and I and I'm willing to bet that the majority of people out there, again, put the fans aside, majority of people have have no idea or very little idea that Michael Keaton is coming back as Batman. I think you put that out there front and center, that becomes the driving the driving force, if you will. And then, again, seeing how the reaction is, if it's this huge mega success and, and people are clamoring for more Keaton, then fine. Then, then that becomes your your reset, if you will. But, I mean, I mean, it's a mess. I mean, there's no other way to say it. No, it's no, no. no. There, there's, you're absolutely right. There is no other... You have essentially three options. A, you don't release it. But the longer you don't release it, the more money you lose. I mean, the only thing I can think of off the top of my head is is no time to die. And the reason I say that is because it had the same budget. That's them. Yeah. I mean, they were MGM was losing money hand over fist every every month that movie didn't get released. Right. Now there's a difference. And the major difference is that that movie was supposed to come out during the pandemic. Right. This is yet to be released. Well, no, they've Number already two, back twice. Yeah. Right. They, yeah, at that point. Number two, you push it back. Now, the question is, how far do you push it back? Well, you know, do you want to go to 20, because you get Joker coming out in 2024, and you push, push back to 2025? Yeah. I mean, Aquaman may not be, you know, so that's that's option number two. Option number three 
what you were just making mention of. You do limited press, but let's face it, the press are re- relentless and ruthless. You know it's going to come up. Oh, I know. Oh. So at what point do you just say, okay, enough's enough? Now, there is that option of, okay, just release it, bite the bullet, move on. Because I've said this, you're going to have a couple of different um, kinds of people coming out for this. Number one, you're going to have comic book people. Number two, you're going to have people that are interested in the curiosity factor. And number three, you're going to have your moviegoers. So it's going to make its money. I yeah, It's one of those things, Phil, that it's like you, it. you can't do anything about it. You really can't. And he – it's just – if it were, yeah, I'll be honest with you. If it wasn't such a big investment, they would have put it out already, or they're gonna. So I guess the question then is with this, because it's supposed to come out the end of July of next year. Which, by the way, Indiana right. Jones is supposed to come out the next week. So right. move it no, and just yeah. So moving forward, though, that, that's a whole other mess in itself. Moving forward, yeah. though, for the rest of this year, what are you looking forward to? Give me a couple movies that are on your radar, maybe on on other people's radar that you're like, go see these. So I'm, I'm, I'm stoked to go see bodies, bodies, bodies. Um, That's starting to make its, its rollout right now. Um, Very excited for um, don't worry, darling. That, that, that is going to be a, 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 a mind trip <laughs> to say the least. I, I really can't put my finger on what it is about because the plot I have made in my head, I know will not be it. And I'm just that much more excited uh, to see it. Um, there's also Amsterdam, which I think is going to be fantastic. Uh, definitely uh, watch for some interesting uh, uh, acting nominations to come out of that one. And uh, another one I'm really stoked for is the uh, Knives Out sequel, uh, Glass Onion. Yeah, yeah. I think all those movies that you just named are just unbelievable. The one I'm really looking forward to that's premiering at um, TIFF, the Toronto International Film Festival, is The Whale. Thank you. That's another one. I think that Brendan Fraser, from all accounts, he's going to get a Best Actor nomination. And I'll be honest with you. Without question. Right now, he just needs good news. I know. I mean, he was in The Batgirl. I know. know. He didn't by even all, know it got canceled. No, by all, <laughs> no, but by all accounts, he was giving a, a fantastic performance uh, as, as the villain Firefly. But no, I, I, you're right. The, the whale is another one. I would also throw in um, uh, Blondie. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's um, be very I'm good. curious about the the Steven Spielberg one as well. Oh, that's right, the famous. So, yep. Yeah. So one. that's going to be fun. And of course, we have. You know, the, October is really the big month. I mean, you have the new um, Black Halloween Adam, movie, well, which yeah, Halloween. you've got Black uh, Adam, which yeah. is going to be interesting. Yeah. November is going to be, you know, Amsterdam. And then, of yeah. course, the next week is Wakanda Forever. Yeah. I have a feeling, and I've said this before, this is going to make more money than Wakanda. This is going to make more money than uh, Black Panther. Black Panther is one of only oh, God, eight films. Yeah. To ever, regardless of whether, I mean, obviously, the first trailer was just like, you know, get the tissues. But oh, the, the thing is that, you know, you there's only been eight films ever to make $200 million its opening weekend. Mm-hmm. Now, The Avengers back in 2012 was the, the first one. It's ironic because there's five of the eight are Marvel films. I know. <laughs> um, yeah, believe it or not, No Way Home, The Avengers, uh, Endgame. Infinity War, you know, Spider-Man No Way Home, and you had Jurassic World, and you had a couple others. I think this one is probably going to do in between 230 to 240 million. It's going to probably be the fastest or one of the fastest to a billion. Oh, easily. Um, Easily. Yeah, and this is like right now is the highly, most highly anticipated film of the year. Um, And then, you know, December... You know, December's really, you have the fable men, but that's it. Are there any, you know, looking forward, and you don't have a calendar in front of you, but is there anything like looking forward to early uh, 2023 that you're like, yeah, I'm really looking forward to? Mm-hmm. Like say... um, a John Wick? or well, Let me ask you, are you John Wick fan? You know, I, I wouldn't say that I'm a, 
a diehard fan, but but I I I've grown to to like them more and more as time has gone on. So I I would put that I would put that on the list for 2023. Uh, that I yes. think that'll I think that'll be interesting. Um, Mission Impossible. Uh, I'm I'm yeah. I'm really uh, interested about that, mainly from the uh, the box office standpoint oh, because yeah. you know, especially be, coming on I, the heels of Top Gun. Yeah, I think that's going to be one of those. I think that's probably going to do 200 million this opening weekend. So now we've been talking about great movies or some coming soon. Give me a couple movies that you just absolutely despise let me ask you this sure. have you ever walked out of a movie i walked out of a movie like this is so bad that i just can't stand and watch that it left no i have never walked out because even if a movie is terrible cringe inducing you know makes you want to just cry into the popcorn bucket you know i, I i've always through it, you know, it, it, and maybe that's respect for the art of filmmaking and, and what goes into it. I mean, even a terrible movie, you know, people put their heart and soul into it, so I, I can respect that, uh, you know. But terrible movies, uh, now are we talking recently or, or just well, it could be recent, from- it could be anything. Now, see, th- I mean, this year I have to say, really has not. This has not been a bad year for movies. I know that seems to be kind of the, the conventional wisdom, but I mean, everything I've seen this year so far, I, I have to say is two thumbs up. Like, I mean, you know, even if it was like, okay, I, I, no complaints thus far. Now, granted, you know, we still have time to go, so something else could be a real stinker. But right now, no, I'm, I'm very pleased with with this year. Looking back, I mean, outside of this being just, you know, one hell of a year for, for movies, you know, movies that sort of were like, Oh dear God, what, why did that happen? You know, I did this actually as a, an episode on my show back a number of months ago um, called movies that killed their franchise. And I did jaws the revenge. Now that movie did on a lot and, and, and deservedly. So it is an abomination, especially when you compare it to, what started the whole thing you know just re-watching it for for research purposes i am amazed to this day a movie like that would say yes we're going to green light it we're going to get you a budget we're going to get michael kane on now I, of course i know why michael kane signed on you know for the paycheck and the house that it built uh, which you know mad respect for him there but to, my, to this day I, i'm like Wow, you had a you had a beautiful thing with Jaws. You had a second one, which is you know maybe not inferior, but you know lesser quality. You have a third one, which is just sort of like yeah, yeah it's, it's it's there. But then you have this 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 you know this turd in the Christmas stocking. It's just a I, I don't know that that one to this day I I don't like someone had to sit there and say yes we're going to approve a movie where a great white shark takes revenge on a family like you know yeah. now again you know this was 1987 like today you probably wouldn't think twice about it like oh it probably would just you know be, it would have been green lit yesterday but like like back then like you know this is still like a a time where like there was some self-respect i don't know it was yeah just- no, no no absolutely i mean and that would just say that sequels are so much more difficult to make than the originals because when you have a uh, an original movie like a jaws that was so good for its time. And then you come out with a sequel, you have to raise the bar. That's right. And there's only, I mean, I've said this countless times, there is probably only maybe six or seven films that you have a great movie and then it raises the bar. Right. The Godfather 2 yep. is yep. one of them. Absolutely. Empire Strikes Back is That's one right. of them. Fire I mean, the you have... Winter, the Winter Soldier, oh, yeah, Captain yeah. America Winter Soldier. I would agree with that. I think you have Top Gun Maverick, oh, just that... because of its time. And I mean, I'm not talking about money. I'm no, talking no. about bringing back people that are 30, you know, it's 35 years, and you go, how is this going to play? And it does what it does. 
and the, the, the longevity of it. And then, I mean, I think there's a couple other that's there that I'm missing, but it's like, you know, that is the dark Knight. the dark Knight. Yeah. the dark Knight. I mean, I Batman, that's it's one of those of things where that was just head and shoulders above everything else. There's a and reason. We're don't get me wrong. Here. Batman begin was good. This one just went. I'm going to take it up a whole new. And there's a couple others. Oh yeah. So no, I mean, I understand. Question. No, it, you know, sequels and yeah, it, no, sequels are by definition. You know, what's the, what's the quote? You know, inferior from you know from Scream Two. But um, no, it's it, it's fascinating. Again, you, you mentioned Top Gun Maverick, and you know, I have to say that one really caught me by surprise. I figured it would do fine, would do respectable. You know, again, in the whole little legacy era that we're living on, living in. But you know, I was, you know, a friend of mine was like banking on this movie from the beginning. It's like, no, this is going to be great. This is going to be great. People are going to go see it. It's going to be a game changer. And, and you know, he was right on the money. I mean, literally, th- this was a, you know, this was a movie that, you know, you, you, I think universal acclaim. But, 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 like, just this is how you do a sequel, you know what I mean? And this is how you do a legacy sequel right, you know what I mean? It's not The Force Awakens. <laughs> yeah, no, and I think the couple of things that it hit the trailer, I think that first trailer, when you do a trailer right, yeah, like that first trailer, it had all of the, the bits and pieces you wanted. It had Tom Cruise racing down the the runway with the plane next to him. Yep, you had yep, the volleyball. Yep. You had the, and it worked. And I mean, you take Wakanda forever. I keep going back to it, but I mean, it worked. It regardless of you know, everybody's obviously it was tragic, but it was going to work. It checks all and the boxes. And so when you exactly it checks all the boxes, and when you do it that well, the anticipation goes from here to here, and right. just chomping at the bit. So I mean, well, we yeah. all love an we all love an event movie, and and Top Gun is is an event movie. And I'm going to try to think back, you know, maybe, you know, probably Endgame is the last one just you know, because of the pandemic and, and everything that's gone in, in between. But like a movie that everybody has to see, but also lives up to and exceeds expectations. Like, I, I mean, I, I like I, I don't want to go back to the dark night because, I mean, again, it's entirely different you know, movies and, you know, different times and place, but just a movie that just sort of exceeds your expectations. And oh, yeah. again, across the board, everyone is like, yeah, go see it. This is a great movie. I got to go see I mean, it again. It, you know? it basically, it, it basically um, pushed the needle. Yeah. That's is right. what it does. That's right. It pushes the needle that's because right. when you're able to do that, it's like, okay, here's what we're going to do. And the expectation, I mean, I always say that the Godfather too. While it is, a, I mean, the Godfather for what it is and unbelievable. But how you come back and make a sequel because it's that much more difficult. Oh yeah, it's that right. much more difficult because you know everybody's you know. And mind you, that was back in the seventies. I know. Now today, you had, it's so finite. You have guys like you and me that are like, okay, they're going to rip this apart. And while they're putting their heart and soul into it, I know. Then you have social media, you have marketing, you have people doing all this. And it's like, and there's a reason why, you know, but yeah. So it's just, I think the one universal thing is like, we love movies. That's right. It doesn't matter. Like, you know, I was asking, kidding, kind of kidding you with earlier, but like, we love it. We go into every single movie hoping and expecting the best. That's Even right. Even if everybody else says this movie is crap, we want to see it for us. And this is why I always say film is subjective. That's a right. A film that you may not like, I may love. In a film I love, you're like, what the hell are you thinking? That's right. No, that you're and that's the thing. Yeah. Now everything is it's a it's a matter of taste, and, and again, I, there were probably some you know sh- shared, but like you know, I mean, I know people for a fact who 
downright hate the Godfather Part Two. Like just, oh no, it's 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 awful. You know, how can you do any better than the first one? And again, well, you know, again, respect the opinion. You know, disagree with it, of course, but like, yeah. you know, everything. Some things just, you know what I mean, and then, and some things, you know. It's, it's like ice cream, you know. There's, there's so many different. There's enough flavor for everybody. I mean, that's probably not, you know, the best example. No, but, no, you, know, you get my. Point, no, no, that's you know? a perfect example because yeah. something that you may like, I may not, and vice versa. And it's like, that's why you know, and I think that's why Marvel's made all their billions of dollars is because they were able to take multiple stories and adapt them to film, and then not only to adapt them to film but to put them and make you care about that. And that's why I, and I think you would agree that like the stories and the characters are so, inc- because if you don't care about the main character, do you care about the story? Phil? That's right. That's right. No, no. Again, you have no. to invest in, in your, your protagonist or, or your leads. I mean, the minute you diminish them and I always, this is the big pet peeve. When you prioritize mm-hmm. spectacle over substance, you have destroyed a movie. I don't care if it's well shot, if it's great cinematography, the music. If you have prioritized spectacle, and there are a number of movies, I won't you know get into them necessarily, but like there are a number that just say we're going to just focus on big set pieces or or a big oh my god moment, and it's like no, you've done it at the sake of character. Character always has to be first, always. No, because yeah, that drives yeah. the story. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And that's why, you know, people, you know, because it is about a person, regardless of whether it's a biopic or a comedy or a drama or horror, you care. I mean, you cared about the kid that you cared about the boy in the black phone. That's you right. wanted to see him get out. That's right. Or you cared about, you know, Thor and how this was going to work. And, yep. you know, so I want, will speaking of Thor, and we're going to get going here in a minute, but like one thing I will totally agree with you on, I thought they totally underused a lot, utilized Christian Bale. That, I thought he was good for what it was, but they could have made 15 minutes more. When you, so yeah, when you bring an actor of his caliber into a movie like that and have him play the villain, uh, no, to- totally underutilized. Uh, supposedly there's, him on the cutting room floor uh, that were, you know, too intense. Which, knowing you know Christian Bale, that would make sense. But no, that that was a letdown. That I I wanted to yeah. see more of it. Just yeah, enough said. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah. Anyways, so this has been an absolute treat and a blast. Um, yeah, it's just as I said before, we love movies, and it doesn't matter what movie it is or who stars it in or. What genre? We both have our favorites. We're hoping the movie is good. That's right. I mean, sometimes we get a, a you know, it's just a rotten movie, which is fine. But sometimes we get that gem in Top Gun Maverick, and you just want to go back over That's right. and over and over. And I know you are a huge proponent of physical media. Absolutely. And so... <laughs> Buy, yeah. buy your Blu-rays, buy your DVDs, hold on to your VHS tapes if you, if you still have them. No. Buy your physical media because, you know, digital is great. It's easy. I mean, again, I'm guilty of it from time to time because, you know, spacing is always an issue. But you know, when, whenever you can get your physical uh, your physical media, go do it because th- there is just something special, but it's also important. And, yeah. again, in this in this digital age, it's it's nice to have the, the, the carbon copy, if you will. No, yeah. And, and I think that's we we've gotten to a point in our society where we want everything so instantaneous. That's right. It's like here and now. It's like it's like a microwave. That's you know, right. you throw some a cup of coffee in for thirty seconds. Okay, it's done. Instead of waiting, you know, perking the coffee and everything else, and so it we, is what it is. We need but, to appreciate yeah, so, the, appreciate the payoff. No, absolutely, yeah. and that's that's the you know you just hit the nail on the head. It is a payoff, and now it's like people. The the patience patience is a virtue. Oh, l- listen! I mean, you know, number of, you know, people in my uh, my circle are just like you know clamoring every day. When are we going to get an announcement for the Batman too? Why isn't it happening next year? And it's like, you know, guys, things take time. They, just they should it. take time. You know, again, we're not even six months out. Like <laughs> patience. You know, patience yeah. is key. You know, it's 
Yeah. Don't, don't, don't rush anything in life, you know? No, I mean, and I'll be honest with you, if it's rushed, I don't want to see a Matt Reeves rush Batman sequel. No way. This thing took years to exactly. develop. Exactly. Again. I mean, one of the best sequences not to is the whole car chase scene. That's right. That's right. That's right. I mean How? That that you was, can't rush that was that. that was a mastery. That was a mastery. No. It really I, is. Again, as I as I say, you know, many, many times, for the love of movies and, and for the love of movies, we should enjoy and appreciate the process and the journey, not just what's finally on the big screen at the end. Yeah. All right, guys. So this has been an absolute treat and a blast, like I said. Um, Likewise. And I hope to have him back on soon. I mean, we'll definitely, you know, maybe, you know, maybe before uh, Wakanda Forever and we'll see what happens. So, all right. Um, great. Yeah, he is Mr. Phil Walsh and I am Mr. David